Speaking of which, uh, the man he Indiana, the quarterback position. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm just guessing Brendan Sorsby. At, at this point, I don't know that it matters whether Ohio State knows or not. There's no film on either of these guys. Um, I, I don't know if they would have to do some kind of FBI uh, <laughs> file so they could file stuff on them. Like, I don't know that Ohio State cares that much about who Indiana is going to be playing a quarterback. But, I mean, I know, I know they all care to some degree, but uh, they're just focusing on themselves. Uh, they've got the best receiving core I just had Dylan Sin on, and he's worried that Indiana's defensive backfield may not be quite as good as it was last year. And I'm like, well, that would not be good because they're playing against the fifth or sixth best receiving core in the NFL this weekend with <laughs> Ohio State. Um, yeah, they got two first-round picks. Yeah, that's good. But Ohio State has a new quarterback. So they've got some difference. Um, it's the first game. I just hope Indiana can uh, make it competitive. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the offense does, what they're capable of doing. Um, and it will be interesting to see who they have named as quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I'm interested in that. And this is – I wish they'd go ahead and just say who it is. And it's like, how many years have we gone through this now? At least three in a row or three out of four or whatever it was. I know it was this way last year. And – I guess the year before we knew it was going to probably be Penix, even though he was coming off the injury. But um, I'll, I'll say several things about it. One is <laughs> you're probably better off in some ways to be the backup because the first starter's going to get uh, dogged out there and then people are going to be crying for the backup to come in. He's going to become the immediate uh, answer to the questions. Uh, and secondly is I'm much more uh, interested in how does Indiana's offensive line perform? Because I, yes. I don't care if it's Lamar Jackson or Tom Brady yes. or Joe Montana. <laughs> it's right. If they have the same kind of offensive line play they've had for the last couple of years, it doesn't matter. The quarterback hasn't had time to really get back in the pocket, get comfortable, and look downfield and make his reads and deliver the balls because he's always, not always, but often been under duress. And so – You've got some veterans back on the offensive line. You've got a new offensive line coach that earned respect for the job he did at Wisconsin. And you, you, I want to see how does the offensive line hold up. If it's better, then there's reason to believe Indiana can have an improved season this year because I do think uh, – I don't have any idea what the quarterback's going to be. I do have reason to believe the running backs could be pretty good. Uh, because Henderson was pretty good last year. The, I've seen the kid from Wake Forest play. He's pretty good. We know Lucas is pretty good. So I think, you know, too much talk about the quarterback and not enough talk about what's the offensive line going to do. It, it, yeah, it all starts and stops right there. Uh, uh, I've mentioned that, that without the, – the whole reason Indiana was able to go up and shock the world of beat Michigan State last year by throwing nearly zero passes for 90% right. of the game – was because Rod Carey took over the offensive line and gave them a little juice, a, a little something, enough right. to get by right. a bad – and enough to get by a team that was not as good as they are, which tells you that there were other teams they probably could have, should have beaten had that been the case early on. Um, and that's why – and I, I have some optimism for IU fans on Indiana being a – Anywhere from a four to six win team, um, seven would be shock. But uh, yeah, I can see them winning six games. It all is dependent upon this offensive line, though, uh, without question. Um, and if that if they have a decent line there, then yeah, man, I think that there's reason for optimism along those lines. Yeah, I mean, I've been watching Indiana Ohio State games for fifty years. Okay. And it's a bit of an oversimplification, but the reason Ohio State beats Indiana and so many other teams in the Big Ten, the reason Alabama and Georgia are really good is because they have better players on the offensive and defensive lines. Indiana's had a tremendous number of you know, decent running backs, receivers, uh, defensive backs, but 
in terms of dudes on the offensive and defensive lines, they don't have as many. And Ohio State has them stacked up, first team, second team. You you look at Ohio State's roster. Last year they had three of the best high school offensive linemen that have come out of Indiana in the last four or five years. Where are they at? They're not at Indiana. They're at Ohio State. This year they've got the Fryer kid starting to tackle, and the Floyd Central kid I think is the second team dude. Um Ohio State just line, lines up and controls the line of scrimmage and runs the ball down Indiana's throat, or they protect the quarterback well enough where he can sit back there comfortably and find his receivers. And on defense, they rush the passer and, and make Indiana uncomfortable, and Indiana can't run the ball against them. So if the offensive line can give <clears throat> them some chance, they're not going to beat Ohio State, but that gives me reason to believe they can beat some other Big Ten teams. The same thing on defense. You look on the defensive line – it's all new dudes. It's the kid from Western Michigan. It's the kid from West Virginia. It's the kid from Texas Tech. It's the kid from Texas A&M um, who are all coming in here, and we don't know how good they are. They weren't stars at where they were before. They wouldn't have left, and we're going to see how well they can play. Whereas Ohio State has guys on their defensive front who were five-star dudes who came out of high school and who are already being touted as first-round NFL draft picks. It's It's not that complicated. I mean – you got to have dudes on the offensive and defensive line who perform for your team to have a chance. Uh, and that's what Indiana hasn't had. And the transfer portal is probably the best thing that's ever happened in, well, the best yeah. thing to happen in Indiana football in yeah. 40 years because they can get, because they're a Big Ten team, they can get these cast offs that, man, what I say, cast off. That does not mean a negative connotation. That means guys that are either, hey, man, I got screwed over here at Auburn or wherever that is. They were big-time selections. So now, and as I'm looking forward, I asked this yesterday, if there be, if we get to the point where, the, and I know that we will, where revenue sharing is a real thing in the Big Ten, if that is done equally and is and it, I don't know, it would have to be, I guess. If that is distributed equally, wouldn't that give Indiana some equality in football to be able to offer players of a similar? Yeah, I don't know. That would be an NIL situation. Indiana's going to have to improve its NIL game in, in football to attract the kind of guys, uh, you know, that, that, the bigger name schools were recruited. I know but that wouldn't revenue, made, wouldn't year, revenue that, distribution make well, that almost, the re the revenue distribution would go go more towards facilities and coaching staffs and all that kind of stuff. Unless the I thought they're talking play about play. for players. Well, may I don't know if the schools are going to start playing paying players. Then that would be the case, and that was Harbaugh's thing yesterday, I guess. But um, you know, I, I I've heard good things about the Carter. It's a Carter's kid who came from. Uh, Western Michigan is on the defensive line. You got Linnell Carr that comes in from West Virginia. You got the kid from Stanford who's a linebacker. I think it's Bleedy. Who is he on the defensive line? Who's from Texas Tech? You got Marcus Burris who has a high recruit at Texas A&M who's on the defensive line. These are all guys who, except for the kid at Western Michigan who was a stud in the MAC, um, were all guys who started out at you know more football schools than IU. It didn't work out there. And now they're going to come to Indiana, and you find out is are they guys that got a bad deal where they were, or they weren't as good as their recruiting ranking said they were? Because they have some leftover from last year. They have Miles Jackson, the kid who came in uh, from UCLA, and uh, you know Jared Casey, the uh, linebacker from Kentucky, and um, you know they're, they're dependent on a lot of guys. They got a defensive back from Texas. I mean, they got guys who've come in from football schools. Now we'll see if they can play. Absolutely. And if, if the scheme is right, if the calls are right, uh, the coaching has to be right. Um, so, And we'll find out with a 3.30 kickoff. Louisville, they play Friday. This is, a, this is the greatest college football other than the bowl season. It starts and ends with a bang in college football. Five straight days we, we get. Right. Um, I'm, I said earlier to Dylan, I'm surprised – we're not having Tuesday games like the old AAC games. <laughs> we will. We're going to have some. Louisville plays Friday this week and Thursday next week. Yeah, I'm leaving oh, in the morning. Tomorrow Thursday? morning, we're going down to Atlanta. Louisville's home opener is next Thursday against uh, Murray State. 
Uh, yeah, but the start of the Jeff Brom era is Friday night in Atlanta at Mercedes-Benz Stadium against Georgia Tech. Cards are favored by seven and a half, and it's a game that IU fans should pay attention to because two weeks from now we'll be talking about the IU Louisville game. And, you know, we, we both talk about Indiana getting six wins and making the bowl eligible. Uh, I'd say almost any path, not all, but most paths you would make for IU to get to six wins are going to require a win over Louisville. Yep. Yeah, and, and Louisville are besides the Notre Dame game on Sept October seventh at home. Well, they look will probably be favored in every game that they're going to on their schedule. It looks like. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, NC State they could be an underdog. NC State's not bad. That's the game uh, before Notre Dame. It's, it's a road game. Night game. It's a road game yeah, too. It's a road game. Yeah, they'll be. They got um, Georgia Tech, Murray State. Indiana and then Boston College, which is bad, so they should be four and zero. And then they got to win Friday night, Friday night game at NC State, so they could be five and zero. Which looked good against Navy, and that if both those schools are undefeated when that game's here. That's going to be happening. They'll they'll sell they'll sell this place out again. What are you, you've been around long enough when Louisville and Indiana play, which that's uh, it's two weeks mm -hmm. from now yet. Yeah, um, yeah up in two weeks from who do you think is going to win the attendance award? Uh, Louisville. Uh, their fans are more into football than IU fans are, I think. They're more optimistic. you got a new coach who's a former University of Louisville player. Optimism is at a high level. IU fans were at this level a couple of years ago, but then when it all fell apart with that loss at Iowa, um, I think of the, the fair weather fans, the people who um, – you know, lose faith quickly, jumped off the bus, and Indiana has to win some games to get them back on board. Um, you know, if they would – I don't even know what they could do between now and then to get people back on board. They have to, they're not going to do Ohio State. I can't envision that happening, but they can't – like you said, they can't get blown out. To me, you know, they're 30-point underdog. To me, they need to come within – what? To, to get people excited again, they need to come within two touchdowns. I think three touchdowns, you're still covering the spread, but getting beat by three touchdowns shouldn't be something you get excited about. And if it's it's worse than that, you know, people are going to, the whole thing's going to start up about, um, you know, Tom Allen and is he the guy and all that kind of stuff.